G'day, fellas, and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in over on the west side of the map. It is Beastie QT, and he is going to be playing the Mongols for us today. His opponent, who spawns on the opposite side of the map, playing the Chinese. It is the one, the only, the Viper. And he is uh, an incredibly good player. If you're unfamiliar with him, make sure you check him out. I'll leave a link in the description, as well as Beastie QT. He as well, an incredibly good player. You can see in the top right-hand corner of your screen right now. Uh, Beastie currently ranked number two. Not bad. Uh, Viper, a, li a little bit further away from him, but uh, these players I definitely would say are evenly matched. Now let's talk about this map. We've got Ancient Spires as the map. Ancient Spires, a little bit of a curious one. You kind of spawn in a crater here. I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but like the the way that it looks like, you, you see how he, Viper is kind of stuck down down the bottom there. Um, a, a good map for civilizations like the English, which have the longbows that can get up there. Um, I'm curious if Beastie's spawned in a crater as well. He has, they're both spawned in craters. Sometimes you can get much larger craters to spawn in, but let's talk a little bit about this map and the way that it works. So first and foremost, you've got uh, ponds, and subsequently it makes it more attractive for civilizations that are good on hybrid maps, like the Delhi, like the Mongols. Uh, and so if I was going to do a tier list of civilizations on specific maps, I would be putting the Delhi... Um, or I'd probably be putting the Mongols as number one on this map, Delhi as number two, and Chinese probably as number three. So I, I would definitely say that the fact that they get the, uh, that they have access to so many ponds is a really good thing. Uh, so that, that is a huge bonus for them. Viper now going to begin expanding down towards uh, the south here. So actually not going for this northern expansion here. And I'm curious what the decision was behind this. It might might be that he can't fit a dock in here. It's a bit of a weird spawn. You might be able to get one up there, but obviously it's a fair bit of a distance. Uh, it's also quite far away from his base. Uh, but by the same token, um, I mean, it, when it comes to distances from base, this one's pretty far away as well. He does have his uh, villager out here. I would expect that we're going to have some sort of aggression coming out from Beastie here. Uh, so we'll have to take a look and see exactly what he's up to. He's got the Uvu down. Going to be dropping down a barracks nice and early. Already has a dock out and a uh, fishing boat, as well as the villager going to be out there gathering as well. So Beastie now looking to begin transitioning. And you can see that he is on the hunt right now uh, for any potential uh, docks. That's what he's looking for at this stage. And probably going to run into it eventually. Now, one of the things that we do see uh, Chinese players do is they actually uh, will look to do to do dock hopping. So they'll go from one pond to the next, just dropping docks. Uh, outpost going to be coming down now for... Uh, ooh, apologies. Uh, outpost going to be coming down now for Viper. A nice move from him. Uh, managing to get a fair few sheep as well. We'll take a look at Beastie. So Beastie, uh, in moving over towards the direction of Viper, he's doing a good job of scouting out the entire map now. Beastie's got access to shore fish. No deep sea fish in here. Uh, no deep sea fish for Viper, at least in this pond, despite it being so absolutely huge. Uh, but now going to be coming in, spots this one out, and we would expect to see the barracks is going to be rallied straight away. You, you see that that rally point straight away uh, coming down towards the uh, the direction of this uh, this offensive location uh, for Beastie. Uh, so how does Viper react? Now that Viper knows that Beastie knows about the dock, does Viper look to bring out more villagers? So th this is something that we see. So players will go and th they'll pull four villagers from their main um, base. And then they will look to... They're, perfect. Wow, there, there it is. Okay. So three villagers now going to be coming out here uh, on Shorefish and going to be looking to shore up this location. In addition to that, I would love to see Viper uh, go and scout out Beastie. He does have that front Uvu. Uh, so I don't think he scouted out the barracks. Uh, but he should be able to spot that one. And then as soon as you spot that, you drop down a barracks in your own base, begin supervising with the Imperial official, and that that is your reaction to it. So you see those spears coming out. So straight away, Viper needs to drop down, like bring all these villas in. Uh, and then, okay, he's doing that now. So you want to get these guys and drop down a barracks straight away. Very, very quick smart. Um, and look to begin reinforcing that location. And that's the only way you're really going to hold that. Viper actually just going to be dropping down some walls here for the moment. Manages to get a couple of those uh, of those spears through. They are going to be able to get inside the tower. So they might be in a bit of a difficult spot. He's actually going to be dropping down an outpost behind uh, the wall. So a nice response here from Viper to go for the, the walls here. I do like this from him. Maybe that's what he was thinking about why he didn't come out down over here. Because it's a little bit of a more difficult spot to wall, especially with the stone there like that. But this one for Viper, very easy. He's going to be coming in, finishing off this wall. 
The outpost, though, is really going to prevent uh, a lot of gathering up in this area, so it's, it makes it very difficult for him. Viper now going to be clicking up to the next age. No barracks at this point. Going to be going with a Barbican. Not too far forward, so this Barbican isn't overly forward, you know, on the gold. It's not over towards the uh, the food. It's just sort of safely in the base, still within reach of the town center. And now we've got the spears coming in. L looks like it might be a short life here for the horseman. He does manage to get away. 6 HP. He's going to try and heal it back up, managing... Uh, to, to bring that one, but uh, we'll take a, take a look now over at his opponent, Beastie, and we'll see how close he is to aging up. Doesn't look like that close at all. Only just started collecting gold now, um, and now going to be able to jump inside that outpost, and this is where the fun begins for Beastie, because he's going to be able to focus down these fishing boats, and it's going to be so much damage. Actually, I think he's going straight for the villagers. He was going straight for the villagers, so he's going to have to fall back on that front. Second dock getting at it now for Viper. Very, very smart move from Viper to do that. So doesn't want to lose these fishing boats. And now Viper reaching the feudal age, it's going to mean that he's bought himself enough time where he could potentially even look at just getting an archery range out here. I wouldn't be surprised to see that. Or just gets a junk. That, that is totally the correct response. So definitely not an overinvestment there at all uh, for Viper. And he's going to be able to hold onto this pond. So very well done from him. Uh, and I think it's just a matter of when it comes to this map, like some hybrid maps like Nagari, you know where your opponent's going to go. But on maps like this, you don't really know where they're going to go. So it kind of delays you. Uh, but now we've got that junk coming out. Going to be looking to defend this location. Junk's got to wake up though. This villager might go down. Looks like the first villager slowly... Slowly, slowly, slowly. Okay, it manages to survive. Going to be forcing back these uh, these spears. But now the junk are going to be applying pressure to this outpost. Ideally, I mean, this outpost is not a big threat at all. Uh, he, he can just use the shorefish over on the opposite side of the map. He'll be f absolutely fine. Manages to take out the villager. Does he get it off? He gets it off. Going to have to cancel that that outpost now. That is, uh, that is gone. Uh, that is gone forever. Uh, and now Beastie heading towards the north of the map as well. Uh, just looking to scout out Viper's base. Spot City's quite heavy on gold here as well. We'll spot that there's been about 250 taken off that. So that's quite a lot for China in the early stages of the game. Viper has managed to secure this up very well. Uh, the outpost is still down here, so he could look to potentially bring the junk down. Uh, but I think he's just happy defending this for the moment. So we'll take a look now at Beastie. He's aging up. He's got six villagers on that landmark. Um, and going to be chased away by a couple of archers. So no Chokunu just, ju just yet. Uh, which Viper may potentially go into uh, in, in the dynasty. Uh, but now that age up has happened, Viper basically all he needs to do to defend this pond is just make sure no dock happens. Can't actually get slayed. Uh, doesn't donate over anything, but uh, he, he was, I think that might have been a sacrifice intentionally just for, for uh, information. He knows he's going to get the Khan back. There's no big fights that are going to be happening anytime soon. And Junk going to be moving in and forcing that back. And now slowly going to be taking out the outpost. We see that the spears are going to be running in here. And Viper going to be able to pick off one, it looks like. No, nope, doesn't get the one off. A lot of damage coming out into this junk. Look how much damage happens on this junk. It is ludicrous. Viper's going to pull this back. He, he might actually lose this. I think he's going to lose this. Uh, I think this does go down. Yep, it goes down. Uh, so Viper going to be losing his junk there. An expensive uh, decision there. Trying to bring that in. So much damage just comes out from those. Six damage with plus 25 versus a ship. That is ludicrous how much damage that does. Uh, but now he's going to have to invest in a second junk. There it is coming out. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, a little bit more um, a, a little bit more aggression coming down towards this pond. But at the same time, Beastie really not overly committing. This outpost never made its way up. Arrow slits coming in. I don't think it's for this outpost. I, it, surely it's for another outpost. But now Viper actually pushing in against Beastie up towards the north. Gur gets packed up at this point as well. Five archers is going to be enough here to try and idle his opponent. You see how much gold is taken from that gold vein. It's going to tell him exactly what his plans are. He's going up to the castle age. Blacksmith was going down, but now Viper doing a great job of just idling his opponent. Really smart choice here to move forward just with these archers. He's created a few of them just in case he needed to defend, and subsequently uh, he's moved out with them just to go and do a little bit of damage, and that's exactly what he's done. Second junk going to be going down now for Viper. He's not having a good day when it comes to his junk, is he? This is, um, this is unfortunate for Viper. He's lost two junks now. Uh, he's going to be losing the dock here as well. 72 tax on that. Not that he was ever going to be collecting that tax up, but yes, it is uh, It is absolutely ludicrous the amount of uh, damage that, that, uh, that those outposts do to the junks. Viper now hitting his dynasty timing. 
Uh, so looking like he's going to be doing about a 10-minute dynasty here. Nine villagers on this one. Going to have access to the Chokunu, uh, which will give him a pretty good unit for age two fighting. But keep in mind, once you get up to age three, or at least your enemies up into age three, uh, it becomes essentially useless as those armored units really do start to take over the game. Horseman going to be coming out now for Beastie. He's got double stable sitting on his Uvu at the moment. Uh, going to be getting the upgrade from early Horseman up to Horseman. Very curious considering he's he's going up to this, the third age at this point. He's going to be going up with the Step Redoubt. Uh, obviously, Viper managing to find that and uh, going to be idling the villagers there as more spears uh, look to come in for Viper now. So he's got three spears, three archers and doing a pretty decent job of just forcing his opponent out. Look at how much damage gets done on those. Just not even close, really. More horsemen now going to come in and you can understand why he's going to go for that horseman upgrade just to make them a little bit stronger in this situation. And uh, the spear's doing so much work here, though. They, they have barely taken any damage. Uh, Step Redoubt slowly going up. Viper doing his best to delay that, slow that, uh, and be seen a bit of a tough spot, I would say. So uh, being forced to train these units that are essentially going to be useless once he reaches the third age, you never really want to be doing that. So Viper getting a lot of value out of these units. Beastie now reaching the third age. 11 villagers on uh, on gold. So we'll do a quick stock take. We'll see where these players are at when it comes to the economic. Uh, so 45 villagers with, uh, you call it an extra plus five, call it 50 uh, because of the step redoubt. And then we'll take a look now over at Viper's base. He's sitting on 47 with two Imperial officials. So call it 49. So these players are pretty much neck and neck when it comes to their economy. But obviously the big difference here is Viper is in the second age. His opponent currently sits in the third age. And that is going to be, uh, that's going to be difficult for him to deal with. One villager going down, two villagers going down. Beastie cutie, you are such an absolute beast. Uh, let's just say that much. Horseman now going to be coming in. I can't believe he managed just to pick off two of those. Do we have the upgrade coming through for this? No, we don't have any hand cannon slits coming through at the moment. Do we have any reinforcements heading out this way? A couple of units. Chogunu going to be coming in as well. Um, uh, but I don't think it's going to be enough or I don't think it's going to be soon enough. You can see they've got quite a distance to make. So that's going to cause that first building to go down. Second building, probably going to be able to survive. We've got the junk coming back out again for, what, the third the third time this game the junk comes out and tries to defend. Going to look to focus down the Khan. Actually gets a fair bit of damage out onto it. Villager manages to survive after, get onto, after rather getting onto the other side of the wall. And now we'll take a look over at Viper's base and see what he's got going on. Drops out a market. So looking to rebalance that economy out a little bit as well. Uh, are there any trading posts on this map? There are indeed. One trading post up here. One trading post up that way. So you can potentially trade on this map as well. Uh, Chokunu, got to wake up. Chokunu, going to go down at least. Oh, that, I think that was the bug. I've, I've had this bug happen multiple times. I don't know what causes it, but your units, you tell them to attack something and they just stand still. And I, I think that's exactly what happened. We actually saw those units turn around as they were like, they look to fight and in, in, engage into the Chokunu. Uh, I've had it happen with my Bombards. I've had it happen like on water maps. It, it, it always seems to be on water maps. It's something to do with water. Uh, it happened to me on, what map was it? Mongolian Heights, it happened to me. I had Bombards that were trying to attack something and they were just like, I would right click them and they're like, okay. And they just sat there. So I think that's potentially what is happening. Towards the base of Beastie, he's still under attack up here. So Viper just being so annoying with this little raid raiding party. It's, it's really, really effective. The fact he's only using six units to do this, but he's causing his enemy to just sit completely idle on gold. It's obviously at a point where he really needs gold. He's just hit up to the castle age. And now going to be taking down and actually slicing out that Lancer, managing to take it down to about 29 HP. I love that sound. That sound is just... I don't, I don't think I will ever not enjoy hearing that sound. Beastie actually going to be expanding into a second pond here. And Viper got to be careful now as a lot of Lancers begin poking around at the front of his base. So Beastie... Expanding up to a second pond. Four fishing boats out there right now. Uh, Viper really committing to age two at this point. This is quite curious. A huge military mass from Viper beginning to build. 17 units in the middle. Now keep in mind, in addition to that, he's also got the units that are around the back of the, the base of uh, Beastie. There's a lot of Lancers out here. Veteran Archer is going to be coming in as well. Uh, so Beastie definitely picking the right unit composition to deal with his enemy. At this point, uh, more raids towards the front of the base, getting picked off units. And at the same time, on the back line, looks like the Lancers are going to be able to deal with that very effectively. But Viper actually going to be able to push this away. Now, keep in mind, he does have that large mass in the middle of the map. Uh, and he's going to look to uh, begin circling upon his opponent. And uh, we may potentially see a little bit of a bad battle coming in here for Beastie as Viper act activates Beast Mode and runs in at lightning speed. He's playing Age 2 up against Age 3, but I tell you what, it doesn't look like it. It looks like he's playing Age 3 against Age 3. 
All right, we'll take a look over at Viper's base, see what he's up to. It looks like he's about to click up. There we go. Going to be dropping down the astronomical clock tower. Probably here is a good spot for it to go down. Still within the, the radius of the Imperial Academy. Uh, but he's going to be going towards the front of his town center. Uh, also going to be picking up plus one attack. He's already got plus one ranged attack. Uh, but now double junk. We actually had a dock going up down the bottom from or down the south from uh, Beastie. The, the, the fourth? Is that the fourth junk that goes down this game? Uh, there's a lot of junks. I think there might have been an explosive dow that went in over here uh, just from the capsized units that we see so beastie really being so annoying uh, and but this is this is one of the impressive things about beastie he doesn't give up you know even though he's got two ponds up here towards the north it, that doesn't matter for him what matters is that viper has got um you know viper has got units down here and viper gonna be losing a fifth junk Viper is just throwing away junks like they're trash at the moment, like they're like they're junk at the moment. Um, and Viper now going to be moving in towards with hardened spearmen. Has he got the upgrade coming through? Indeed, he does. Supervising that upgrade as well. You can see how quickly it's going to come through. So already getting that veteran upgrade. Beautiful timing on that one. Very very nice use of the Chinese imperial official there. And look at them just cleaning up the units. Choking are going to be coming through as well. Got the veterancy upgrade for them as well. They're going to be looking to trade in with the veteran archers. They've already got plus two attack or rather plus two defense. So they're going to be able to hold their own against the choke. You know, but uh, a nice little cleanup party from here uh, for uh, for Beastie. And now towards the base of Viper. Viper looks like he might be under a little bit of a, a little bit of a threat right now as a huge amount of arrows come out of that Barbican. Uh, keep in mind, it does add arrow slits. And now we've got another... It, it's it's just demo ship on demo ship on demo ship. A war junk going to be coming out now. Looking to clean this up. So Viper having a difficult time. I tell you what, Beastie, I, I love the way that he plays. The fact that he's so aggressive here. So we'll do a quick stock take. We'll see where the players are at. So Viper sitting at 57 villagers at the moment. Uh, his opponent currently sits on 59. So both players relatively even. Obviously, there's other uh, factors to consider. Things like uh, step right out. Things like Imperial officials. But they're still relatively even. There's, there's, there's nothing that's too far away. It looks like the dock might start to slowly burn down. We hear those beautiful slits going off as another push comes to shove up towards the north of the map. And this has got... We've got action absolutely everywhere. Viper really having a tough time uh, dealing with Beastie. It looks like both players attempting to out-APM each other. But I tell you what, we, you know, when you think about China on this map, you don't really think of it as a strong civilization. But Viper definitely capable of taking it to Beastie at this point. I'd expect that we would see a villager moving out from Beastie to come and heal this one up. He wants to keep this dock alive. Um, and now look up towards the north. Veteran Chokunu coming in. Plus one uh, defense uh, for, for melee. But uh, doesn't look like they've got any attack. I think they've only got the plus one attack at this point. So no plus two just yet. Now down towards the south, we've got the war junk uh, for Beastie. Going to be cleaning up this com this pond completely. So really being annoying, obnoxious uh, Beastie has been for Viper. And it looks like this villager that wants to try and heal up this dock has got to make a decision. Do I heal the dock? Or do I take out the uh, do I take out the body infantry that is attacking me? And it's decided it's going to just heal up the dock. I think for now, now it's going to turn around and actually deal with that uh, with that wolf, and manages to take it out. And now going to continue healing that one up. So we'll take a look now as the buildings move towards the front of uh, Beastie's base. Obviously, his new Uvu. It's been up for a couple of minutes now, but he's going to begin adding in more units or more more military production. So you're going to be going up to five archery ranges. Are we going to see M Mangadai potentially coming out of him? I don't think so. I, I think that Mangadai can be useful in one matchup, and it's against the Rus. Other than that, I think they're... Pr uh, look, I'm not going to say useless, but then just not that good would be the best way to say it. And Viper now pushing out with a huge mass here. Springlets, Chokunu, Spears. So we don't see any crossbow in here. Just 22 Chokunu. Uh, I think he's only got plus one. He probably needs to invest into plus two. Yeah, needs to get in that plus two. That's going to give him an extra three damage of volley there. So he's going to be feeling very good once he's got that one uh, coming through. But now look at the beautiful macro here from Viper as well. Less than 500 resources. At least it was just uh, very briefly uh, in the bank. Prayer tent on the front line here. He's got to be careful with the prayer tent. Hey, that's a, that's pretty good value. A shaman. Uh, you can get two shamans for with an extra 150 stone. I, that's pretty good value. I'd, I'd pay that. The main thing is they, they take so long to make. 45 seconds. So it's that's pretty decent. Uh, Springlord's now going to be moving in as well. Prayer tent does go down. Turns back into a monastery. We've talked about that one before. But look how, look how quickly it dies. So damn quickly. And Viper mass, Viper's mass looking insane at the moment. Not enough spears here for my liking though. Probably needs a few more spears in the mix. Gonna have reinforcements coming out across the map. We see that uh, that tower going down. We'll switch over to Beastie's perspective and see exactly what he's got coming in. 
now now down to the woods the south of of the uh, of viper uh it looks like the springles are going to be firing in on the archers plenty of lances here managing to get some of those slits off and he's going to have a have, have a little bit of trouble here because there's definitely not enough spears to deal with these lances there's it just feel like there's a lot of lances but the chokunu are just going to be able to melt through the majority of the units here villagers kind of be coming forward as well looking to get down those clockwork springles and now going to be coming through, meeting them. Let's take a look how much damage they've got. They've got 20 damage a pop here. And I think there was 13. So that should be more than enough to be able to take out these Springles. They get the first one down. And Beastie's going to be able to clean this up. So it looks like Viper, while activating Beast Mode, has unfortunately lost the majority of his army. So a nice little clean up there from Beastie. We'll take a look at the military count. And you can see that Beastie is currently sitting on 103 units killed compared to 64 for Viper. So definitely Viper's got the more sort of trash army is probably the best way to say it. Uh, but obviously, uh, good, good kill to death ratio there for Beastie. We'll take a look at income per minute now because I know that you guys love to see the income per minute um, and give you a bit more of an indication as to how these players are going. Double war junk in this pond just to guard it up. And now I love that Beastie now is going to be starting to fish down here, adding his own fishing boats in here. So he's, it's essentially the third pond now that he's going to be fishing up. So really nice stuff from him. I, I love the way that he plays with re regard to that. Now Viper actually adding in a second town center. So looking to try and push up his economy a little bit now, considering that he has lost uh, the water. His op opponent's got three of those uh, three docks, three ponds secured at this point. And Viper in a bit of a difficult spot, I would say, just primarily because, well, his opponent has got a large mass. Viper with 30 military production at the moment, or 30 military rather. Uh, but we, now we've got some palace guards on the back line going to be fight, fighting against those lances. Lance is going to be having an absolute easy time melting through the, the pierce armor and the, the melee armor of his opponent. A lot of villagers trying to get inside that town center. Unfortunately, it's only got room for 10. So you guys are going to have to find somewhere else to go. But then in the meantime, we've got archers coming out. Uh, no crossbowmen yet coming out for the Viper, despite such a large lancer mass. And that lancer looks like it might get away. Raids happening all over the map. A gold vein down towards the south of Viper's base is now running idle. And Viper going or losing uh, or having 12 villagers sit inside that town center. We'll take a look from Beastie's perspective. Do we have any rams coming in at this point? I feel like it's time for a ram. No, no, we don't. I, I would love to see like a ram at this point or maybe even some sprinkles of his own uh, just to begin challenging this town center. He knows that this town center does exist. Uh, he has spotted this one out. So I I'd love to see him applying a bit of pressure there. Beastie sitting on 62.38 at the moment. Viper sitting on 81.29. So not too bad. Viper actually doing pretty decent on village account. Um, and now going to be expanding onto a new wood line. So not taking... Actually, that's not a wood line. Never mind. That's why he's not expanding towards it. And Viper, once again, Viper really lo just likes to throw units away. I feel like he just wants to trade out with his opponent all the time. I don't know exactly what the thought process is behind that, whether he thinks that he's going to be able to out-eco him um, or, or what the play is. But now Village is up towards the north, going to be going down. Beastie having an absolute field day here, just picking up villages everywhere. And he's really just trying his best to out-eco... Well, not, not out-eco, but out-APM Viper. Viper. Spotting once again that second TC. We'll see how Beastie reacts to that. And what the appropriate response is going to be is either uh, he looks to uh, single it out or he looks to even it up. So whether he looks to get uh, trebuchets or ram, something like that, or whether he looks to add his own town center in, that's going to be the best response. Otherwise, he could just stick on one town center. Why the hell not? Players love to do that in this game. We just go with one town center for the entire game. Uh, normally a, an absolutely fine play as well. Viper managing once again to push back his opponent. We've got a castle going down. A little bit of a curious spot. I'm cu I I'm, I'm wondering about this position. I guess it's on the sacred site. Maybe that's what he's looking to guard. But it doesn't really guard a lot. It obviously protects this town center. But, you know, if you would just come up, up to here, like right here, then you're at least protecting the large gold vein as well. So that's one thing to consider. Uh, Viper going to be adding in outposts as well. Uh, but I, I suspect it might just be for this sacred site. Maybe that's what he's looking for. Uh, keep in mind, on this map, there are two sacred sites. So there used to be three. There's now two on this map. Um, and so a bit of a nerf to Delhi there. They were very strong on this map originally. Uh, but obviously, it's all been changed. And speaking of sacred sites, now towards the south of Shaman, heads towards the sacred site and looks to secure that one. And Viper in a pretty good spot at this point. A quick... 
score check reveals that Beastie is ahead by about 2k score. But keep in mind, he is playing the Mongols. And you guys know the Mongols uh, do overscore quite a bit when it comes to their landmarks. Whenever they pick them up, whenever they move them. So you can see there once was a, uh, a step redoubt there. And it's now been moved on to... Gosh, where has it been moved on to? Down here. So just it looks like it just landed. It did just land. Uh, and so that is going to be buffing up the score even further. You can see it. It's spiking once again. Village is going to be trying their best to run away. We do have the Monastery coming out for Viper as well. So both players tacking into a little bit more religion than what you'd normally expect. A lot of a lot of uh, villagers out here. Bit of a field day here for Beastie. He's got to get back, Viper does. And he manages to now uh, move some Chokunu back towards those, uh, these villagers. He is actually going for the next dynasty. So we can see that at the moment he's sitting in the Song dynasty. He's going to be going up to the Yuan dynasty. And that is going to enable his units to run a lot faster. So it's going to give him a huge amount of line of sight as well. Check this out on the minimap. You're going to spot it. So it's going to uncover all of this area. There it is. So that's going to give him a huge amount of line of sight and also going to give him the Imperial Spies ability, which is going to uh, enable him to spot out any villagers from his enemy. And first and, and finally, it's going to give him a movement speed buff. So these spears are going to be running extra fast. 1.44 movement speed. And now heading in. Does he have plus two? He does finally have plus two on these Chokunu and are being raided in all sorts of spots. Drops down a village very tactically. I love this village placement from Viper. So very smart move from him. That was available to him in the Song Dynasty, but going to continue chasing away the lances of his opponent at this point. Now down towards the south. Viper going to continue fighting out with these lances. Look at the beautiful micro there from Beastie. Just wanting that that one single lancer not to die, so he pulls it back. You know, he's got the, the presence of mind to be fighting up here and yet still do that down there. That is incredibly impressive stuff. We'll take a look now towards the base of Viper. He has managed to wall up, so he's got a nice little safe choke or pocket back there. Uh, and he's beginning to control space, so that is really nice for him. Demo ship trying its best to come in and do a bit of damage there to Viper, but not going to be successful. I don't think a single unit went down there, and slowly those Chokunu are going to be melting through that dock. It's going to take time, but they will eventually get it. Uh, I don't think he's going to be creating any more demo ships at this point in time. He's got docks absolutely everywhere. Interestingly, the only two pawns that weren't taken from these players ha are actually uh, the ones with deep sea fish. So you've got two of them that didn't have any, that had deep sea fish and were not taken by either player. Uh, but now it looks like Viper uh, going to be going up against an age four player as Beastie hits the fourth age. We'll take a look at what his production is looking like at the moment. You can see how many uh, production facilities he's got. Training up double lances at the moment. And another raid down towards the south. He's been so relentless on this gold mine. Excuse me. Uh, and uh, and now Viper going to be catching up the sacred site uh, in the middle. He's already picked up this... Uh, wait, is that a... Sh that is a blue shaman. That is a... Uh, that is that is not Viper's unit. That is a Mongol shaman right there. And a horseman now going to be... Oh, th those are fire lances. Going to be cleaning up these lances down towards the south. But keep in mind, his opponent has now reached the Imperial Age. So Viper has made a decision to go into the Yuan Dynasty to get that speed buff, also to get access to the Fire Lancer, but at the same time, his opponent has been able to go up to the Imperial Age, and that's going to make it very difficult for him. A little bit of a uh, curious decision right here as Viper uh, exposed villagers, not putting down an outpost. Going to be losing a lot of villagers here as well. He's under attack from a number of different spots. And spears are actually still inside the outpost, and Beastie's got the presence of mind to actually release them and begin attacking. Viper's still going to be losing villages up towards the north, down to about 103 villages now. So losing about 10 villages at this point. He's going to be brokenhearted when he realizes that he's lost all these villages up here. Beastie, very happy with that one. Some n nice cheeky little walls coming in from Viper as well around the back line. So he's really looking to shore up a lot of this space. Now, he's had relentless raids coming in here. Uh, but this wall should prevent the majority of that. There's only a couple ways through. Also going to be dropping down a granary as well. Viper really playing into the Chinese dynasty strengths here and just looking to maximize everything he can uh, from that, that perspective. So a lot of people won't use this, the buildings that uh, the, the dynasty provides. So the, the granary is one of them, but it was recently buffed. So one of the buffs uh, to the granary, it, it, villagers used to return. You can see how they return uh, the resources. They used to return it to the middle right here. So it would be extra walking distance. You can see it's, and it, it, it might not seem like a lot, but it really starts to add up. But now they've, they just simply return it to the edge of the granary. So a very nice change there for the Chinese players and definitely invites them to make those granaries a little bit more. Only 100 gold left on that gold mine. So Viper's not going to be too sad about losing that one. And now expanding out towards the middle. I tell you what, this has been an absolutely action-packed game at this point. Uh, Beastie's score is starting to pull ahead absolutely ludicrously. So he's sitting on 11.5k uh, score 
And you've got to sort of ask the question at this point, how much of that is real and how much of that isn't? But I've got a sneaking suspicion quite a lot of that is real. So if Viper wants to win this, he is going to have to activate beast mode. That is for sure. Um, but now Sacred Sight towards the north is still taken by Viper at this point. Going to be able to repel this one. Is Viper going up to the next stage? Let's take a look and see. Resources don't indicate it at this stage, but he's getting pretty close to that, towards that max army. Elite Lance is going to be coming in here as well, and Viper really needs to start sealing off absolutely everything. This front is quite open. You hear those Fire Lances, that beautiful sound going off as they connect in with the enemy. And now we've got some Barracks is going to be coming down on the front line as well. He's able to clean this up. Fire Lance is going to be doing a very decent job here of preventing this. And now, actually, we've got ourselves a little bit of a stone wall. Everybody get back inside while we make this stone wall, please. You can see Viper just clicking relentlessly. He's like, oh, get in, get in, get in. And they all managed to get in. So that is going to secure up this edge. So where is, I, I, I would love to see from Viper just more stone walls. So another stone wall here. This is a great map for stone walling. Uh, just simply because there's so many nice little choke points. These uh, spires really give you a lot of uh, accessibility when it comes to those choke points. Uh, but now we'll take a look over at Viper. Viper definitely looking like he's going to be going up to the next age. You can see just how many resources he's got in the bank at this point in time. So a huge amount of villagers as well. 103 villagers. We'll check on Beastie. Beastie sitting on 88, so not too far behind. Uh, but keep in mind, Beastie obviously up in the Imperial Age already. So he's got plenty of tech advantage. Already got those elite lancers coming out for him. Uh, and this whole time been sitting on just a single town center. So not feeling the need to add in that second town center, at least just yet. Now adding up an Uvu towards the north. And you can see Beastie moving up there straight away. All of his buildings, all of his production going straight up towards the north. Couple bombards now coming out for Beastie as well. So he's starting to think a little bit more about the long game. We've also got the market, which looks to be moving down towards the back corner over here. You can actually see something is getting placed down here. I, it kind of looks like a prayer tent, but it could be the market. We'll have to see. We'll have to wait. We'll have to see. But that to me indicates he's probably going to start thinking about trading, uh, which is definitely the wise decision. Uh, so it definitely looks like that market is going to be going down. Yes, indeed it is. So that market's going to be going down. Uh, and he's going to be looking to trade with the trading post up towards the north. Probably get that yam network going. But now we've got those sprinkled... So Springle Tower's going to be doing a lot of work here. Keep in mind, he did go up with the Great Stupa, or the White Stupa, rather, uh, which is going to be giving him the double uh, the double stone production. So it's going to mean that he can make more and more of these uh, these outposts with the Springles in them. Because even though the Mongols use their stone uh, for a lot of special things, when it comes to uh, their outposts and, and the way that they upgrade, it does still cost you stone to do that. Uh, so it is one of the, the consequences of, of, uh, of playing the Mongols. So in, in the middle of the map, Viper got a lot of villagers out here. And no Imperial official on this gold mine. I would love to see that from Viper. So one of the things to note is the Imperial official can buff up how many resources your villagers drop off. So you can see they're dropping off 1530. That would be dropping off 18 or 36 resources with an Imperial official. So it basically just gives you a little bit more longevity in that gold mine. So you can see them, you know, they're, they're standing around here. This one, I think it's researching or it's uh, supervising the blacksmith which you know definitely is a, is a reasonable thing but at the same time or, and researching or uh supervising the uh university i actually did we just witness the bug firsthand i think viper supervised the university is he like what's what's he doing oh my god 416 in that one yeah okay and now he's realized okay so now it's going to be supervising so going to be going with biology there uh and so all of his uh all of his uh, units or all, all of his imperial officials are doing the right thing at this point in time none of them are sneakily idle you know sometimes you get them get imperial officials that you forget about you know you might put down three lumber camps like viper has done and this second one might be getting supervised up the third one's out here you know you've moved on it was 10 minutes ago and then you're like wait where's my imperial officials at and then you spot them and they're, they're doing that so it is it's one thing to always be careful of a lot of elite units now coming out for Viper. Elite Fire Lancers coming out. He's got the Elite Spears out. Elite Chokunu as well. So he's really looking to get a nice composition in here. Uh, very curious if he actually looks to get the Incendiary Arrows. A great upgrade here for the Chokunu to give them an extra six damage a burst. Uh, so really, really nice. And what's under attack down here? It's a Bombard. Beastie has brought a single Bombard down towards the south. The, if there is like, if there is one, one act that is like that demonstrates beastie it is this it is a single bombard killing a fucking stone wall on the flank like this is literally it he brings a bombard all the way from home down towards here doesn't go for the front goes for the flank 
It is just, this is so stereotypically beastie cutie. It is like, that, that's just the, the kind of attention that he pays. He's like, he's trying to crack his enemy like an egg. And he's like, all right, well, I've got to come in from that angle. I can't go into the front. There's castles there. That's where my enemy expects me. But now if I come in from behind, uh, it's, it's going to be a different story. So I would expect if we just have a whole bunch of fire lances coming down here, uh, no units moving towards here just yet. A couple of sprinkles going to be down here. Village is going to be going down. And up towards the north, it looks like we've got the fire lances going to be taking out the majority of this pond up here. In fact, all of the pond. And now we see those uh, nest of bees getting off about three arrows before they decide to stop shooting. Second one going to be... Yep, there it goes again. Beautiful, beautiful uh, job, nest of bees. Um, <laughs> you guys know I love the nest of bees. You can just see how they, they fire just three arrows and then they decide to give up. Uh, Fire Lance is now going to get into the economy of his opponent. It looks like Viper is finally activating beast mode as he is starting to deal with his opponent the way that his opponent has been dealing with him this entire game. Going to be Look at the damage that comes out from these Fire Lancers. Viper plus Fire Lancer. It is the definition of beast mode. Viper really not playing around at this point in time. Enemy coming in as well, looking to do a bit of damage and try and deal with this. But how how is he ever going to get some, some form of trading economy up when you've got this many Fire Lancers that are just rampaging through your base constantly? There's a lot of units. Like, there's 23 Fire Lancers. It's a, a significant amount of, amount of uh, units here. Fire Lancers are going to be looking to meet the Lancers in battle. Moving up towards the north, Villagers uh, looking like they're getting a bit of a fight on. Bombard probably going to be going down here. You see the movement speed coming out from these elite spearmen. 1.44 movement speed. The, uh, where are they? The, the palace guards are going to be even faster. There they are. There's one of them. Going to be running at 1.94 movement speed? Palace guard, what have you been taking? Hey, we, there are laws against that. That is called, we've got an anti-doping commission for a reason. That is ridiculous. 1.94 movement speed. Six bombards in the middle of the map. Fire Lance is going to be able to get on top of them. Beastie was absolutely forgetting his unit composition. And he says, hey, I heard Siege is a good unit to make. Makes a whole bunch of bombards here, but going to be losing a lot of them. Two bombards going down so far. Third one going to be going down. Viper having an absolute field day here. Taking out 3,000 resources here. 4,000 to go and manages to get them. Uh, taking them all out. And now down towards the south, Viper continues to push his opponent. We've got the step redoubt that was down here. That's going to be making an ev evacuation as well. And Viper looking pretty strong at this point, managing to hold on despite those walls going down. I was a little bit fearful for that, but it looks like he's going to be able to continue holding on at this point. The step redoubt was in there, but now continuing to make its way back towards the middle of the map. We hear those bombards firing off over on Beastie's army. Going to be able to take out elite... Elite... Lan oh, gosh. The elite lancers. But now Viper hitting that population capacity. You hear that beautiful sound. Every time he loses a unit, it's going to reinforce it. Beastie just sitting on a casual 12,000 food. Beastie, what are you doing that you have 12,000 food? I feel like that's that's probably a bit of overkill at this point, Beastie. Uh, but now towards Beastie's base, more Fire Lance is going to be going down. Beastie needs to move into a tra or transition into a, into a trash army. Three Bombard's going to be coming out for Beastie. He's going to be so careful not to lose these. You can see just he has no gold income at this point in time other than the gold that he's getting in from his relics. So we take a look at his monastery. It's somewhere around here. I can smell it. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it's somewhere around here. We'll, we'll find it later. Don't worry. All right, Beastie managing to take out that castle and pushing in. There is a gold mine that's up here, only 999 gold, so I'd be surprised if he looks to contest for it. But now those elite fire lances are coming back. He needs to get the movement speed arrow out here. These lances are going to try and get in on top of these bombards to try and protect them. You see the fire lance is doing a great job here. Palace guards coming in from the south as well. This is the last of Beastie's siege at the moment. Beastie's got no more gold behind this, and a, a sacred site's going to get neutralized at the same time. We've really got Viper turning on beast mode at this point in time as he begins to push in towards the base of his opponent, cleans up the attack towards his own base, and Viper now going to be pushing out with his own bombards. He's, these are pyrotechnic bombards, the best bombards in the game, baby. They are 12 range compared to the 10 range of their enemies. So very, very strong. Fire Lance is going to be chasing away the elite lancers, and Viper in an absolutely commanding position. Still got access to this gold mine in the middle of the map, this large gold vein towards the south. It's only got 500 left in it, but now Viper going to be opening up a couple more bombards. I say a couple more bombards. Holy moly, he's got... How many freaking bombards are we talking about right there? He's got six more bombards. Where does he pull these bombards from? He's got no gold income, and yet he's got bombards out the wazoo. Towards the north of the map, it looks like more attacks happening. There's just absolute chaos everywhere. Sacred Sight still remaining for Viper. Viper going to be doing his best to try and distract his enemy. We check the village account, 107 with 64 military. Compare that to Viper, who sits on 90 with 99, so significantly larger military mass. A little bit more resources in the map, in the bank, and he is max population as well. 
Now, we've got Beastie just bringing out all the Bombards. Now, keep in mind, these Bombards do have... They don't actually have chemistry at this point. So if we... Wait, do Mongols even get access to chemistry? Hold on, i got to check right now. Uh, let's have a look. They do get access to chemistry. Okay, so Bombards still yet to be upgraded. That does increase the damage by 20%. So, not a bad amount. But now Viper actually going to be coming in with Elite Fire Lancers. And Viper really activating Beast Mode right now. I know I must have said that like six times, but, you know, we've got Viper against Beastie QD. You've got to be talking about Beast Mode when you're talking about these two players. You've got Rank 2 up against Viper, who just won Genesis. So, I tell you what, if there's ever been a time to talk about the Beast Mode, it's got to be right now. Viper looking to continue to siege down his enemy. The score difference is definitely still in Beastie's favor, but obviously a, a significant amount of that is the 16,000 food he has collected. Um, a lot of units coming out for him, but at the same time, uh, not a lot of trash. I, I want to see, like, from him, he needs to be getting those upgrades. So, like, if we take a look at the barracks, he needs to be getting the Spearman upgrade. He needs to be getting... He's got the Horseman upgrade. He's got the Archer upgrade. So he's got the majority of his trash upgrades in. But he's under attack in, on every single front towards the north. There's Chokunu coming in. Viper pushing in towards the town center. Towards the south, we've got units attacking the Bombards. There's more Fire Lancers that are coming in. There's just absolute... If, if I'm beastie right now, I'm just going absolutely crazy. The APM is going off the chain right now. And I think this might be a good game. I can't see any way that Beastie can get out of this. The Fire Lancers are going to be able to seal this deal 100%. Now moving up towards the north of the map, the Fire Lance is looking to get a pretty solid connection here. And just slowly but steadily, it looks like Viper has managed to hold on and he's going to be able to run out his opponent very effectively. Take a look at this one. Here, here they go. Boom, 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 boom. Call the Vanga bus because that is some absolute Vanga boy action right there. Towards the south now, Bombard's beginning to move out. Is Beastie going for a landmark snipe? I feel like that's what he's going for. If, if I was Beastie right now, I would be going for a landmark snipe. And you don't move six Bombards in this direction, this way, without thinking about a landmark snipe. He's got to be doing that, in my opinion. Unfortunately, he's going up against the Chinese. The Chinese are a civilization which has got the most landmarks, full stop. So we take a look at the base of his opponent. Actually, is he, is he recalling the Bombards? No, he's not. I mean, he's... He, and, uh, Viper is going to know about this now. So if, if he actually does try and go for this, how many landmarks has he got? One... Two, three, four, five, six. That's it. The hardest one is going to be this one. It's the furthest away. So he could get in here. He could look to do some damage. I think he's really going for it. He's really going to commit it. Viper at the same side. He's got the uh, at the same time. He's got fire lances, so he might look to actually hit the landmarks of his enemy as well. Now the fire lances are going to be trying to come in. Bombards need to get on the move. They've managed to find a nice little spot down here. Plenty of bombards. We've got ourselves a little bit of a base race right now. Was Viper actually coming in underneath the town center? A lot of villagers down here going to get cleaned up by these fire lances at the same time. Bombards focusing down the landmarks. Indeed, we do have ourselves a little bit of a base race. Beastie going to be committing here. First landmark does go down. Viper has... How many landmarks do we have? We've got five landmarks for Viper. It should be... It should update to four relatively soon. Um, but now Viper going to be in a difficult spot. His enemy is coming through, but it looks like Viper actually going to be pushing through. A lot of Fire Lancers coming through, and there's not enough military here for BC to hold. He was thinking about going for that attack, but unfortunately, it's going to be difficult for him. Uh, by the same token, it looks like we've got Bombards from from Viper coming in, and we've got ourselves a double base trade, but it looks like Viper is going to be able to defend. He holds off on, on home, and GG gets called. Beastie QT taps out. Viper is victorious. Viper going completely beast mode. Fellas, if you've enjoyed this casted game, make sure you check out these two players. They're wonderful content creators. I'll leave links in the description so you can go check them out, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.